Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Retina Roundup. I'm Dr. Vindya Jagdish, fellow in vitro retina and ocular oncology, bringing you this month's top five articles. The first article for discussion today is regarding determination of the foveal morphology of the normal fellow eyes of unilateral macular hole patients using a swept source OCT. The foveal morphological parameters of these patients were compared with the normal eyes of the healthy subjects. They found out that the normal fellow eyes of the macular hole patients had a thin central retina, a thin fovea, a wide foveal floor width, a thin outer nuclear layer, a thick outer retina, thus making a thin, wide and a deeper fovea to be more fragile and more susceptible to the tractional changes occurring during PBD. The second article for discussion is regarding determination of the patient and the surgical factors associated with the 360-degree laser retinopexy during parts plane of vitrectomy and its impact on the surgical outcomes. The study included 192 subjects who underwent parts plane of vitrectomy, of which 130 patients received 360 degree lasers and the rest of them received a limited laser. The 360 degree laser group were associated with the patients who had worse preoperative visual acuity, male subjects, more complicated cases with the higher grades of PVR and associated scleral buckle use. To our surprise, the 360-degree laser did not have any impact on the surgical outcomes like single surgery anatomical success or postoperative visual acuity. And it was not associated with any of the significant complications like epiretinal membrane or cystoid macular edema either. The third article is regarding subthreshold micropulse laser, which is in vogue right now for the treatment of central serous chorioretinopathy especially considering the non-availability of the PDT. The article studies the OCT biomarkers in the eyes with CSCR undergoing subthreshold micropulse laser. Patients were divided into two groups. The group one included patients where SRF resolved completely and group two where the SRF failed to resolve following the laser. The OCT biomarkers like subphobian choroidal thickness, RP and the inner choroidal alterations like inner choroidal attenuation, irregular PVDs, hypertransmission defects were compared between the two groups. Thicker subphobial choroid and RP and the inner choroidal alterations were found to be the negative biomarkers for SRF resolution following the subthreshold micropulse laser in this study. The fourth article is regarding therapeutic effect of intravitreal pexeta coplan on photoreceptor maintenance in geographic atrophy due to dry AMD. The mechanism of action of Pexeta Coplan is via the complement Z3 inhibition. In this study, 246 patients were randomized into sham, monthly, and bi monthly injection groups. OCT was done at baseline and two months, six months, and 12 months. Differences in the photoreceptor loss and RPA loss was compared between sham, monthly, and bi monthly injection groups. Statistically significant slower photoreceptor and RP loss was noted in monthly injection group compared to the sham using a deep learning based algorithms on OCT. But is this slow progression visually significant enough to have a better quality of life? Yes, more research should be able to answer this question. The fifth and the final article for today is regarding association of the vitreoschisis induced vitreous cortical remnant and development of proliferative vitreoretinopathy. The histopathological and immunohistochemical analysis were performed on the membranes removed from the peripheral retinal surface during vitrectomy. Analysis revealed membranes with a different area characteristics. Membranes with a low cellularity, like vitreous cortical remnants, transition into areas of increased cellularity and finally into more fibrotic area of proliferative vitreoretinopathy. retinopathy. Based on this, a histopathological staging of development of proliferative vitreoretinopathy from vitreous cortical remnants was developed, thus confirming that vitreous cortical remnant as a risk factor for PVR formation. Hence, its prompt removal is warranted during vitrectomy. So that's all for today. See you next month with five more interesting articles. Thank you.